Sheen Sale. Which promises to bring us bitter cold temperatures, some freezing rain and snow. The Weather Bureau has put out a severe weather warning. The winter storm continues to threaten Ontario, and in southern Ontario, light snow continues and will become heavier in the afternoon or evening, along with increasing gusty easterly winds. So here's the Chum Toronto area forecast. Bitterly cold and windy with some freezing rain followed by 10 to 15 centimeters of snow. High winds will cause extensive drifting. It will look minus 20 today. Down to a bone chilling minus 30 tonight. Minus 15 tomorrow. Winds from north at 30 miles an hour. Gusts up to 45. It is minus 18 downtown.
forward, initiates striding. Arm and leg coordination is natural. And the weight shifts to the front foot with each stride. Light and flexible cross-country boots and bindings allow the same striding movements on skis. The only difference is that poles are used to add striding power. So, walking on skis is as easy as walking on foot. Leaning forward initiates striding. Arm and leg coordination is natural. And the weight shifts to the front foot with each stride. But skiing can be more than just walking on skis. A strong forward lean, aggressive pulling, and smooth, powerful strides give more glide. And a long glide with each stride is the key to skiing efficiency. All the forces are directed for maximum forward propulsion. Drive forward with the shoulder and reach for the pole plant. Pull back with the shoulder and push back low with the hand. The arms work close to the body and parallel to the skis. There is a minimum of energy wasting up and down bouncing and side to side swaying. The key to striding power lies in strong flexion and powerful extension of the hip, knee, and ankle.
When the track is too fast for effective striding, double pulling is more efficient. Reaching for the pole plant gets the weight forward over the poles. Drive the chest down over the poles and push back low with the hands. Striding and double poling are the foundation for all cross-country skiing techniques. The changeover from striding to double poling and back to striding is a smooth transition. By leading into the double pole with a powerful stride, double poling power is increased.
Arm and leg coordination is always natural when striding. But the rhythm varies according to the terrain. On uphills, the glide shortens. So, shorten the pole work and pick up the pace to maintain momentum. As the track flattens, lengthen the stride again to pick up speed. When the track is too steep for uphill striding, the herringbone is best. Emphatic weight shift to the front foot is the key to effective herringbone technique. A neutral body position and one foot forward for front-to-back stability improves balance on the downhill. The knees flex to absorb bumps and the weight is on the heels for better ski control. To reduce wind resistance and increase speed, the aerodynamic tuck position is ideal. Supporting the elbows on the knees also gives tired back muscles a rest. The low tuck position further improves aerodynamic efficiency, but is less restful. Simply standing up increases wind resistance and reduces downhill speed. But the snow plow is best for controlling downhill speed. By bending the knees and pressing the heels out, the skis are edged for more braking power. The snow plow turn starts from the snow plow position. By increasing pressure and edging on one ski, a turn results in the direction of that ski. Stepping around the ski tails on the spot is easy, and a step turn is a good way to maintain downhill speed. Skating is often useful to increase speed on a slow track. The skate turn is best for making sharp turns at high speed. Double pulling into the turn and double pulling out add power through the turn. shortens so we pick up the pace to maintain speed all right that's it now are there any problems